Okay, so we're going to be talking about the task exam and specifically the math portion of it and a great tip that you really do need to know when you go take this exam or any other math uh, exam um, at that. So uh, with that being said, let me just go ahead and um, state right up front. Obviously, if you're watching this video, okay, and you're interested in the task, you know what that is, right? It's a high school equivalency exam for some states out there. It's basically the same as uh, taking like the GED or the high set exam. A lot of states um, are going to their own particular exams. A task happens to be uh, one of them. But basically, all these exams are high school equivalency and are pretty similar in what they want to know. In terms of the math section of it, you really do um, need to have a pretty good uh, foundation in high school mathematics, and that would include basically algebra and geometry, okay, uh, for the most part. Now, if you're struggling with um, uh, learning uh, this material, I have a link in the description of my video for my task math accelerator course. Um, it's a great course. You can check that out uh, later, but again, the link is in uh, the description of this video. So let's get to this tip that you need to know. Now, on the task, some of the questions are multiple choice. And when you're taking an exam, you got to love multiple choice uh, questions, especially when it comes to math. Okay. Now, I'm not going to guarantee you that this tip is going to apply to every single uh, question, Okay, but it's something you need to know in your arsenal um, uh, and have it available. Now, this tip that I'm going to share with you is important on almost all standardized tests. Um, things like the SAT exam, if you're going into college or applying for college, ACT, of course, all the other exams, GED, etc. So um, learn this tip for the task, and if you're going to continue on with your education and, and math's going to be part of what you might be studying, then you'll you'll like this. Now, after I share this with you, you're going to be like, oh, that's kind of obvious, but a lot of students don't uh, remember this when they go into an exam. All right, so maybe you already know this, but let's get right to it. So here is a question. Let's say I have a question here. It says solve, okay, or find the solutions to this particular equation, all right? Now, if you don't even know what this is, or you're like, I have no idea how to even approach this, well, that's probably normal for a lot of uh, people. Probably a lot of people who are taking the task they might be you know, intimidated if they haven't even studied for the exam. So you kind of have two choices here. If this is not a multiple choice question, you actually have to solve the equation. If you have to find the solutions, OK, and then, you know, you have to kind of write down that, hey, these are the solutions and and, um, you know, hopefully, you know, you'll be correct. So that's pretty much like what we call like an open ended uh, question. They on the task exam, they're called like grid in questions where you basically just write in, you know, uh, your answer. So you, you're going to be faced with some of these questions as well. But then again, you have multiple choice questions. OK, and multiple choice questions is here's the same problem and select A, B, C, or D, which is the right answer. So when you are given a question, same question, but with a uh, multiple choice format, now that's really for your advantage if you you know can remember this tip and there's a few other uh, little tricks. So let's get into it, okay? Now first, first of all, in order to solve this, I'm going to go ahead and solve this real quick. This is what we call a quadratic equation, right? It's a polynomial. Okay, just got some x's, and the highest power here is to the second degree or two. So if you don't, if you're totally lost already with what I'm saying, no problem. Okay, check out my my task uh, math accelerator course in the link uh, below. You'll learn all this stuff. Okay, but let's suppose that. You know, you didn't know. Really, the tip I'm going to be talking about is, let's say you're totally lost. If it's a, if you have the same kind of question in a multiple choice uh, format, you could still have a high probability of finding the right answer. But anyways, let me go ahead and solve this for you, then we'll get into the multiple choice uh, uh, tip here in a second. So what you have to do in this particular uh, equation is recognize that there's two solutions, 
And the way we have to approach this particular problem is factoring. So I could factor out x, okay, so this would be x minus 8 equals 0, right? So if you notice here, if I multiply this x back to this x, I get back to x squared, right? Something times itself is what we call being squared. So x times x is x squared, and then this x multiplied by that 8 will be 8x. So this down here is the same as that, but when you have something factored, it's really advantageous for us to solve equations. Now, in algebra, when we have something factored, that means you're, you're looking at two or more things that are being multiplied together. So really what I'm saying is x is being multiplied by this thing here, okay? Do you see that? So x times this. So this thing times this thing. It's like 3 times 7. So what's 3 times 7? Well, the answer is 21. One way we would state that is the product of 3 and 7. Okay, so the product of 3 and 7 is 21. But 3 and 7 are what we call factors. Factors of 21. Now, when you have an equation, you can, you can break it up in its factors in this particular manner especially when the equation is being equal to zero, we could solve this thing rather easily, okay? So let me ask you, I have this thing in green being multiplied by this thing in blue, but the answer is zero. So I have something being multiplied by something else, all right? I'm just using a square and a triangle, but the answer is zero. But I want you to overthink this, okay? I just want to ask you, if I said, hey, um, I have these two numbers, but when I multiply them together, the answer is zero. Can you tell me the value of this number or that number? Now, think about it again, right? You have two things being multiplied together, and the answer is zero, okay? What does that mean about one of the numbers? Well, hopefully, you said that, hey, well, one of the numbers has to be equal to zero, right? So if I'm multiplying two numbers and the answer is zero... Well, one of those numbers has to be zero, like a times zero is zero, right? If I have any other number other than zero, I will not get zero as my answer. So I can have one of the numbers being zero or actually both of the numbers being zero. And we use this to our advantage in algebra. So here we say, well, x times x minus eight is equal to zero. That means that x must be equal to zero and x minus eight must also be equal to zero. And this is a nice, simple little equation I could solve by adding eight to both sides of this little equation. So my final answer is x is equal to eight and x is equal to zero. Because again, this equation has the highest power of two. That means there's two solutions, okay? And this is my first solution. This is my second solution. Now, you might be saying to yourself, well, your head might be turning, or <laughs> maybe you got smoke coming out of your ears, and be like, well, that's a lot to know. And this is only one type of problem of one type of area of study in algebra. So you can already see that there's a considerable amount of material that you need to know, uh, and you should know, actually, to, to pass this exam in a direct manner, right? Like, So if I said solve this, you would need to have a, a good grasp on this. And you're going to need to have a good grasp on this stuff anyways when you go into the task, okay? So um, I'm not, I don't want to be like, well, you can take a button, you can learn a bunch of shortcuts and just get out of learning. Now, that's not the point I'm making, okay? However, what I want to do is say, give you a tip that can assure your, your probability of success. So what ends up happening uh, math teachers and stuff, they get a little sneaky, but they also can be very generous with you, okay? So let's take the same problem, okay? Let's kind of erase this here. Let's kind of do it a different way. So you might ask the question, um, what are the solutions to the following problem? Okay, then we would have A... B, C, D. Now, typically, what you'll you'll have is X is equal to, they'll give you options, right? Like X is equal to 2, and X is equal to 7, or X is equal to negative 4, and X is equal to 5. 
x is equal to 0 and x is equal to 8 x is equal to 9 and x is equal to say 12. Now how do I know this? Well I've been a math teacher for many 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 years and part of being a math teacher is also creating tests and quizzes. It's doing assessments and when you and that's a whole science in, in and of itself when you're testing students then you got to kind of have to reverse engineer be like well you give them little hints or tips and then you also put a lot of incorrect answers that they're likely to see because you kind of put an answer down that is the result of them taking a common uh, misstep. You see what I'm talking about? So yeah, when you you know when you're a math teacher, you're really at a, uh, an advantage in understanding you know assessments. And they're you know like these these folks that make these exams, the TAS, the GED, the high set, and all these other type of exams. You know they're really professionals and you really go into um, you know, these questions and details. Okay. So, and they want you to think, I guess what I'm, <laughs> I'm getting at. So they want, if you know the material, you can really, um, you know, take advantage of some of these multiple choice questions. If you come across something like this, and this is not so uncommon to see a math question phrased in this kind of way, like, Hey, tell me which, which one of these are the solutions to this equation. So, the tip that I want you to know is the following. When it comes to equations, things with equal signs, all right, this is an equation. And you can do this with other things as well, math. But I'm going to stick to the just equations here because they're the most common. <laughs> when, you, when you see things with equations, that means that the left-hand value must equal the right-hand value of the equation. Okay? So in here, if I have these x's if I just plug in these X's and I just do this little simple math and the left and the right aren't the same value, aren't the same number, then these numbers here are not the solutions. Let me give you an example. So let's say I had no idea how to do this problem, but I do, I do know enough to plug in these numbers and see if the left equals the right. So I said, well, let me, let me check these solutions and I'm going to plug in two into this equation. So what you're going to do... Let's do it over here, x squared minus 8x equals 0. You plug in 2, you're going to replace the x's for the 2, okay? So it's going to look like this, 2 squared minus 8 times 2. Let me write this a little better. And what we're going to do is we're going to do this math here, and if that math doesn't turn out to be equal to 0, then 2 is not the solution. So let's go ahead and do this real quick. So 2 squared is what? That just means 2 times 2. It's 4. Minus, this means 8 times 2. That's 16. Already, can is there any way we're going to get a 0 from 4 minus 16? I can, I mean, the answer here is negative 12. And if you said 12, then you got to work on your positive and negative numbers. But 12 is not, this is not equal to 0. So therefore, 2 is not the solution. So this choice here, even if 7 worked, this cannot be the answer. So forget about that. Okay, and then you kind of look through here and, yeah, and uh, you just kind of just test things one by one. But what you want to do is you want to test the choices with the easiest numbers. So 2 is a nice easy number but already it didn't work, so you can eliminate A as a possible answer, okay? So instead of testing negative 4, 5, 9, or 12, these are bigger numbers, you might want to test, say, C. Okay, so let's go over and test C, because it has a nice easy number. My favorite number is 0. It's the best number in math. It's so easy to work with. You have 0 and then 1. That's my second uh, favorite uh, number. But anyways, let's go ahead and plug in 0. So that would be 0 squared minus 8 times 0. Is that going to be equal to 0? So you go 0 squared is 0 times 0. That is is 0. And minus 8 times 0 is also 0. So hey, this works out. 0 minus 0, 0 over here, 0 over here. That's true. So, so far, this is good. Okay. They're like, well, that worked. Now, here's the deal. Just because this worked, okay, you also have to check the other solution. See, math teachers can be tricky. They can come over here. Let's go back over here. Uh, let's change this up. Let's say this choice was x equals 0, x equals 7. Now, if you remember, I solved this problem in, um, 
in the uh, beginning of this video, and we already know the answer is going to be 8. But if this person just checked the 0, but they didn't check the other solution, they would be incorrect, right? So we go over here. We have to follow through. We have to check the 8. Let's go ahead and do that. So that'd be, remember, you're going to replace the variable with the value. So that's 8 squared minus 8 times 8. Is that equal to 0? Well, 8 squared means 8 times 8, or 64, minus 8 times 8, which is 64. Is that equal to 0? Well, 64 minus 64 is 0, and 0 is equal to 0. So that's true as well. So this would be your solution. Okay. This comes up rather frequently on math test. Okay. And when you see them, they're almost it's almost as the teacher is giving you a like throwing you some points, like giving you free points. This is like free money, free points for those of you out there who pay attention, who do their due diligence, okay? Even if you knew how to solve this equation, okay, you would still want to check your solutions. But when you're given the solutions, you can always plug them into the equation and check. That's a very, very good strategy to do, okay? So even uh, let's take an example. Let's say I had like 3x squared minus 9x plus uh, 15 is equal to 0. And this was a multiple choice exam. I had A, B, C, D here. Okay, It's not a wise strategy to go ahead and just to start solving this, even if you know how to solve it. That's great that you know how to solve it. If you're given the solutions, you should plug these guys in and kind of do a process of elimination. I think that's a safer way to go, okay? Now, clearly, if you have no clue how to solve this, but you're given the solutions, then it's your lucky day, okay? So you're gonna see these come up, and remember on the task, some of the questions are multiple choice. There's other questions, Will, when you can't do this, okay? But when you can't take advantage of it, all right, you definitely need You'll, you'll, you'll be uh, happy that you watch this video. All right, so let's go and wrap this up. Again, uh, if you know you're struggling with uh, the math that's on a task, there's a link in the description of this video for my um, uh, task uh, math accelerated course. Very, very comprehensive algebra geometry. But you can uh, check out the details by following the, uh, the link again. But um, I do a ton of stuff uh, on math. Um, GED, task, high set, a lot of stuff out there. It's what I'm passionate about. It's what I know. And really, you know, through the years, I've gotten to, um, you know, gotten better at my craft because I've worked with so many people and, and I kind of hone in and, and, and figure out, hey, what's working for people that need to pass these exams? And I want to share it uh, with you. So please consider uh, subscribing. Hit that notification uh, bell. And if you enjoy the video, a uh, thumbs up would be nice as well. And comment. I do get a ton of comments on my videos, which I'm very grateful for. I try to read as many as, um, as I can, but it gives me ideas for uh, future videos as well. So please um, uh, give me some feedback, whether you you know uh, liked it or not. But I can tell you right now that this little tip is something that you want to keep with you even beyond uh, after you uh, ace the task, which I know you can. So thanks for watching and have a great day.